Hello everybody, I am Pastor Alejandro Arias, President and Founder of Alejandro Arias International Ministries. And today is a very blessed day and I want to share with you my testimony and how the Lord called me to the ministry. My grandmother said to me one time, you know Alejandro, when you were three years old, something happened at our house and um, she said a feather fell down upon you and you said, the Holy Spirit is upon me, something like that. And, and I said, to my, I told her, really? Well, that was really amazing for me. As a three years old boy, back then, I knew about the Holy Spirit, you know? So that was really amazing how God really marked my life, how God called me since I was three years old. I used to say to my mother, you know, I, I want to be a priest. And since I was Catholic, you know, I didn't know God was calling me to a different thing. But when I was five years old, I used to gather 50, 40 kids and gave them the Holy Communion. And I used to wear, you know, this uh, big shirt like a, uh, like a priest. And, and I used to, my mother, she used to uh, cook everything for us and, and prepare the table, set up the table, set up the altar and uh, the, the bread, little cookies and uh, the, the apple, I mean the grape juice and she used to set up everything and I remember when I was, you know, I used to preach the gospel for 30, 40 minutes and then make an altar call and pray for the kids and that was really fun. So this fire, you know, this uh, calling upon my life, this passion was growing every day as I was growing this passion was growing as well. And I remember when I was seven years old, my home, you know, my, my family, um, they, didn't, they weren't doing so good. And because my father, he was an alcoholic man, and he used to own two bars. I used to go to my father's bars and pass some tracks and ride in little, in little napkins like Jesus love you, Jesus came to the earth, and Jesus wants to uh, rescue you. Jesus wants to uh, restore your family. I used to ride these little tracks, you know, evangelistic tracks, and pass them out in the bars. I remember my father he used to get so mad, and he said, "Alejandro, what are you doing here? This is not the place for you to be. Why you don't go to bed?" Well, <laughs> and I used to tell my father, "Well, you know." I have a passion, I have a calling, you, I have to preach the gospel, I'm, I'm preaching the gospel. And he said, no, you gotta get out of here because this is not the place where you need to be. So go back to bed. Mm -hmm. You know, when Jesus is not in your family, when Jesus is not in the center of your family, you know, a lot of things happen. My mother, she wants to get divorced and my father, he wants to leave home. So. In all these trouble and problems and tribulation, I remember I used to pray and say, Lord, you are, you are the Lord. You are the only God who can restore my family. And I know you can restore my family. You can save my family. I also remember I used to stop my father and tell him, hey, you know, God has a plan for you. You don't have to leave. You don't have to run away. God has a plan for you. God has a great plan for you and I know you will be safe and I know you will come back to Jesus. So at age seven, I got safe and my mother and my brothers, they got safe as well. My father, we pray for him and he got safe later on. When I was eight years old, the doctors discovered a tumor between my lungs and my heart. And uh, I remember the doctor said, you just have one year of life there is no operation, we can do anything, there's no hope. So you know when doctors and people say there's no hope, that's when you really have to trust in God. That's when you really have to trust in the hand of God, in the healing power, and trust in the promise of God that by the stripes of Jesus we are healed. My mother, she used to pray, and, and, and all of us, we prayed for three months. My family, all of us, we joined prayer together. My pastor as well, he prayed, and, and, and we were praying for my healing. Before I went back to the doctor, I went back to the doctor's appointment. And one night before, 
there was a crusade taking place in front of my house. And I was really excited about it. It was a healing crusade. I was, uh, my, I, wanna, I wanna go, I wanna go, really, I, I really wanna go. And I said to my mother, I told her, can we go to the crusade? I know God, God is gonna heal me in that crusade. I know God is gonna do the, the miracle that we are waiting for. She said, no, Alejandro, you know, we been praying for you and you know, all, all these things that we are going through. So I, <laughs> I pray, Holy Spirit, torture. I really wanna go to that crusade. I was praying and then she came and she said, Alejandro, let's go to the crusade. So she took me to the crusade. And as we entered the place, the church, there was a powerful anointing in that place. And the pastor, he was about to finish the service. And as we were entering the place, he said, I feel in the spirit, there is someone entering to this place and that person is receiving healing. And then he appointed with his finger, he said, you back there, that little boy, I want to prophesy that you shall be a great testimony for all over the world. So when he prophesied that upon me, that was a powerful word. I started crying. My mother, she started crying. And we were crying before the presence of God. And I said, yes, this is my miracle. This is what I was waiting for. And I know, I know that in that very moment, the Lord healed me. So I said to my mother, now we don't need to go to the doctor because the Lord healed me. And I'm sure the Lord did the miracle that we were waiting for. She said, no, so we have to, you know, go to the doctor and check your, you have to check yourself and we have to test, you know, we have to prove the world that you're healed. And I remember we went back to the doctor and the doctor checked me for three hours. He checked my lungs, my heart, everything. He did x-rays and then as I was waiting for the results, I was praying. I was praying in the living room and I was walking and praying, Lord, I know you are my healer and I have received my miracle and I believe I am healed. It was impossible for me. It was impossible for doctors. They just gave me one year of life. But you know, when things are impossible for men, when things are impossible for your family, when things go wrong, God turn things right. And what is impossible for a man is possible for God. As I was waiting for the results, the doctor came and he said, I don't know what to tell you, but God is good. I'm surprised, I don't know, I don't know what happened. But the only thing I can tell you, God is good. And my mom, she was surprised because this doctor, he wasn't a believer and and I asked the doctor, can you tell me why, why are you telling me God is good? Can you tell me why God is good? Well, I don't understand, but something happened. There is, must be a mistake here or something, you know. So I remember he took us to a little room and he showed us the x-rays, the old x-rays. He said, look, right here, look that little shadow, that's the tumor right there. But I want you to look the new x-rays. Look, it's clean. There is no tumor. The tumor had been disappeared. I said, praise God, the Lord healed me. And he said, yeah, but there is something I don't understand. There is a little scar. Can you see the little scar? And, and I said, yes, I can see it. He said, I don't understand why you have the little scar right there where you I'll pray, did you have a surgery when you were two years old? I said, no. So that must be something supernatural. I said, yeah, God made the surgery. God healed me. And since that, I've been preaching about healing and miracles. And since that, I've been believing that God can heal people with all my heart.